Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. The situation in Ukrinki, Kherson Oblast now looks like that. The Russian Z Army is still unable to take this Ukrainian bridgehead under control. It was created by Ukrainian army several months ago, even before the winter as far as I remember, but Shoigu around one month ago already reported that Russia liberated this area. But somehow Russia still has tremendous losses out there. All of their attack attempts towards this place failed. Later on I'll show you the particular images from the latest attack of the Russian forces in this place. So Russians attack from two of the directions and their hub center is over here, but sometimes it's under Ukrainian artillery fire, that's why they had to extend the supply lines, which is not good for them. Basically all of this area is within the range of Ukrainian artillery systems. Meanwhile for Ukraine it is even more difficult because our supply line goes across the Dnipro river. And all of this area is also within the range of the Russian artillery systems. Also sometimes Russians go through this small river to ambush Ukrainian supplies and also to mine this territory. One of those mining procedures didn't go according to the plan. Let's watch the video. This video is published by the famous Ukrainian drone unit commander Magyar. And here you can see the Russian boat. There are two of the crew members, let's say, this guy is responsible for mining the area near to the shore and this guy is responsible for the boat control. So they went to the place not far away from the shore, there are some of the trees, and they start to mine those waters. But probably this guy was incompetent in his moves, that's why we have this picture. The boat with all of the mines on board just caputed. What a mishap for the Russian army, but sometimes it happens. By the way, my friends, I'm unable to publish some of those kind of the videos on this platform. For that, I use my Telegram channel. You may find it in the video description just below. There is my personal group. There I upload some of the news from Ukraine and also videos. And this is the job of Ukrainian army. Also in the Krinky area, Russia tried again to assault towards the place where there are BTRs, as you can see, and also BMPs, but they were totally ambushed by Ukrainian FPV drones and artillery. At the same area of Krinky, Russia lost their surveillance drone unit, I mean soldiers together with the drone. This time it was the Heimer's shell strike. So the situation in Krinky for Ukraine is kind of hard under the Russian shelling, but still Ukraine is capable to control this bridgehead, which is mostly used to attract the Russian army to that place, and they cannot use their forces elsewhere on the front lines, for example, on the eastern side of Ukraine. For now, there is no talk that the Ukrainian army is capable to advance from the place to the south, because Ukraine is out of their resources. If we check out Divka direction, there Russia still assaults, but this time much slower compared to what it was several days ago or several weeks ago. Their latest achievement is Tanenke village, but later on they bogged down and unable to move ahead. They lost quite a lot of the vehicles over here, their big convoy was ambushed. That's why they need to compensate those losses to start the attack once again. The only place where they moved a little today is near to Berdichi. Unfortunately, that Russian attack wasn't repelled, they stopped very close to the village. I would say that partially they even entered it, so they used the ballistic missiles, their tanks and their surveillance drones. The river goes like that, so I believe that they are able to proceed occupying this village. And Ukraine continued to use the FPV drones to eliminate the Russian positions in occupied village. Even though Russians take some of the positions, but it's not the happy ending for them. They are under constant Ukrainian fire. Also the Russian DIY MTLB with mounted big M12 Raper gun was targeted in the place. Kaboom. Let's move to the south again. According to my information, which is not yet available in internet, Russia has a successful attack from Verbova, unfortunately. Again, they moved from this side, from Verbova, and took one or two of the fields. That's why I'm sure that Ukraine already withdrew the forces from this area. Probably tomorrow or the day after tomorrow we're gonna see this sort of the picture. Sadly, it's like that. Ukraine is unable to stop the Russian attacks. However, at the same time, Russia is not proceeding with a high pace. They proceed with severe losses. If we go to the Bakhmut area, this is the city of Bakhmut, the hotspot over there is Ivanovska. Russians partially took this village under control, and from what we know, Russia is preparing one more big attack to occupy all of this village. They concentrate their forces somewhere in the Bakhmut or near to Bakhmut to proceed with a convoy to attack the village, 
Hopefully that convoy will be demolished. More about the Bakhmut area, Russians claim that they targeted the Ukrainian bunker with the Ukrainian command of the forces which are located in a place, but the problem for Russian propaganda that this particular bunker was built to withstand a nuclear strike. It is a Soviet-made, very robust construction, which is a part of the chain line of those kind of the bunkers across Ukraine. So for sure there are no any casualties, even though this bunker was attacked by the Russian Iskander ballistic missile. Again, there are reports mostly coming from Ukrainian media sources or Ukrainian social media influencers that Ukraine targeted many of the Russian ships. They all say that it happened during the recent attack in Sevastopol, probably already three days ago. According to those satellite images, there is no 100% confirmation that Ukraine targeted at least a single ship. Yes, clearly, there was the attempt to target those ships, there were some of the traces on the ground on the piers near to the ship, but we don't see the actual proofs. Most likely, the ship I was talking about in my last video was really targeted. But again, it is most likely, I cannot state it 100%. Yes, we have the report from Ukrainian officials as well, but I wouldn't trust it at this particular Point. Let's wait for more information coming, but now it is understandable that there is no significant damage of at least a single ship out there in Sevastopol. Again, something is happening in the Belgrade People's Republic. Let's watch this video. I'll share it on my Telegram channel for you to watch it fully. But clearly it was a drone attack on the place. Ukraine continued to target the Russian oil refinery facilities, so the Russian gasoline production dropped by 14.3%. The fuel crisis in Russia is imminent, and this is only because of the sanctions which Ukrainian drones applied on those oil refinery facilities. I read the news in Ukrainian media today that the Department of State, in particular Mr. Miller, told that Washington doesn't support Ukraine in its attacks on Russia and the Ukrainian government knows about it. And here's the quote to be more particular. The Ukrainians have recently said that after some reports about the United States warning them not to target Russian oil refineries, that they understand those warnings, but they have certain military targets and they will continue to target those. On oh, this American slang, can you bring us up to speed with regard to those conversations between the United States and the Ukraine and if you guys have recently been telling them that they should not go after the Russian oil refineries. So what Mr. Miller answered, so I'm not going to speak to specific conversations, but it has always been our position since outlets of this war that we do not encourage or support Ukraine taking strikes outside its own territory. Again, Mr. Miller answers that he is not going to speak about specific conversations, but this has been our long-time policy and we have made clear to Ukrainian government, so it's not something that they would or which they would be aware. Okay, journalists said. This answer of Mr. Miller really shows me that there was one more conversation definitely happened between the Ukrainian government and United States White House representatives, they insist for Ukraine to stop attacks on the Russian oil refineries. I think it was done like that. The main reason is obvious, the high oil prices are not profitable for United States, especially in election year. I believe that it is the only way for Ukraine to cut the fuel supplies for the Russian army and start some sort of the crisis in Russia. That's why if our government really follows the national interests, they will continue to do so. Meanwhile, we have this article saying that Russia struggles to obtain the funds from selling their oils through the China, Turkey and UAE banks. Basically, those financial institutions are afraid to get under the sanctions by the Western world. So countries like China, Turkey may have their own national policy, but what is private is private. Now Russia needs to search for alternate ways to obtain the funds for their oil, otherwise they will struggle 
economically. It shows that after all sanctions are working at some certain level. Ukraine has developed the analog of the Russian Lancet long-range drone. The tests are ongoing now and it looks very, very similar. I would say that this drone is one of the biggest Russian advantages. With Lancets they were able to target many of the Ukrainian artillery units, sometimes even airplanes and air defense systems. I hope that soon Ukraine will do the same. Here we have the statistics for Ukrainian tank support from our allies. As you can see, the most tanks we have from Poland. 250 Ukraine obtained from Poland in 2022 and 74 in 2023. Most of those, I mean all of those, are the Soviet-made or upgraded by Poland tanks. From the other countries, mostly we have the Western-made tanks like Leopard 2 or Challenger 2 or sometimes Abrams. You can see that the number of the tanks in 2023 is less compared to 2022 and this year I believe the number will be really small. I do not like this trend that Ukraine loses the support from the West but we have what we have. Some media sources shared the quote of the Deputy Chief of the British Defense Staff Lieutenant General Rob McGowan. He said that Britain couldn't find Russia for more than two months because it would have not enough ammunition and equipment supplies. Well, I wouldn't say like two months, especially then UK has nukes, but the Western countries really need to think about producing more of the artillery shells and other stuff. We may see that dictatorship countries like North Korea, Russia, China produce lots of the weaponry. Luckily, we have the good news from our allies that production of artillery shells is ramping up in the European Union, the power of the shells will go for Ukraine. Ukraine is now the forward frontier to fight against the direct Russian attack, aggression, so it's better to invest right now in Ukrainian army than later on to invest in the own armies and fight with their own people. For me it's logical. Meanwhile, China reconstructs some of the streets of Taiwanese cities. So here you can see that those streets are very similar to the Google photo of one of the Taiwanese cities. Some of the streets of it. And this is the military drill location in North China near to Mongolia. Is it a coincidence? Well, I don't think so. China constantly modernizes their army and in the coming years they will have many more ships. Maybe they are getting ready for something. Strikes in Hungary against Orban. Wow. There is some sort of the bribe scandal ongoing right now. The political opposition in Hungary released some of the proofs that Orban was negotiating about some sort of the bribe and the locals were very disappointed about it and they went to the streets. The old school torch protests from what I can see. A Russian propaganda clown Solovyov again speaks about 48 hours. We give them 48 hours to leave Kharkiv. So we had Kyiv in three days before and now we have Kharkiv in 48 hours. Well, actually the Kharkiv city is really close to the border, around 20 with something kilometers. And as you can see, judging on this green color, Russia tried to offense to the city. It is a big city and Russia wasn't able to do it in the beginning of 2022. And now for sure they're out of the resources to advance there once again. But nevertheless, they might try. At least we have some of the reports from the Russian media, from the military bloggers, from Ukrainian and Western media that definitely Russia has some of the storage of the weaponry and reserves for this attack. But I think again that it's not enough for this big city. They are out of the resources for this try. If they try it, it will be their biggest mistake because now at least they have some of the advantage over Ukraine on the east, on the south. They are taking some of the ground just a little but now if they waste their resources over here, for them later on it will be nothing to fight with so they should announce a new massive mobilization. Maybe it is their goal and for this stupid reason they might start the attack on Kharkiv. Why do I think that Putin might do it? Because he is out of the real picture, out of reality. It seems like he listens to Solovyov all day long. Here Solovyov says about the Kyiv city, explain to me why Kyiv still exists. Why does this Nazi city still exist? <laughs> Oh my god. He asked to shell the capital city of Ukraine because people of Kyiv accepted this and betrayed the memory. So they are like the enemies for Russia from this point. All who our brothers are already here in Russia. They found a way to cross the border and come here. So in their propaganda they are calling to bomb Ukrainian cities 
with everyone inside those cities. They tell about it openly. This is what Russia really is. If we're not gonna stop it here, it will go further and further. So Ukraine should be supported with everything the democratic states have. My friends, don't forget to press your huge like to this video. By doing so, you help me a lot. And also, if you want to support my job, you may check out some of the links in the video description just below. Thank you so much for your kind support. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.